You're listening to Nurse Converse, presented by Nurse.org, a collaborative podcast amplifying diverse nurse voices. Get ready for a dose of inspiration, a sprinkle of education, and a whole lot of community. Hi there, Nurse Chanel here, and I am bringing you this week's episode of Nurse Converse, and I'm going to be discussing five tips for introverted nurses in the workplace. If you're wondering what an introvert is, it is a personality type. To determine if you are an introvert, please answer the following questions with a simple yes or no. Do you dread small talk but thrive in deep conversation? Does being around lots of people drain you and you often feel overwhelmed when interacting with patients, their family members, and your peers? Do you feel overstimulated by the end of your work shift? Do you tend to do things by yourself instead of asking for help? Do you tend to think before you speak? And do you enjoy solitude? You may be more of an introvert if you answered yes to more than half of those questions. Now, we know that effective communication is crucial in the healthcare setting um, as it can lead to better patient outcomes. However, this may be difficult or challenging for the introverted nurse. That's why I'm here to discuss five tips for introverted nurses in the workplace in hopes that these tips and strategies will help. First, let's define introvert and how it came about. In my research, I read Susan Cain's book, Quiet, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. And it has so many nuggets on introverts and extroverts. These personality types were first described by Carl Jung in 1921 in a book that he published called Psychological Types. In Susan's book, she quotes Carl Jung saying, and I quote, introverts are drawn to the inner world of thought and feeling, said Jung. Extroverts to the external life of people and activities. Introverts focus on the meaning they make of the events swirling around them. Extroverts plunge into the events themselves. Introverts recharge their batteries by being alone. Extroverts need to recharge when they don't socialize enough. So in other words, introverts are more reserved, whereas extroverts are more outgoing, which is how they channel their energy and thrive. Now, it's important to point out that no one person is solely an introvert or extrovert, and most people fall somewhere in between those personalities and are called ambiverts and consist of both traits because you may be an introvert in some situations and more of an extrovert in others. Statistically, in Susan Cain's book, she mentioned that one in every two or three people you know are introverts. That's 33 to 50 percent of the American population. So I thought that was interesting. Now for me, I can remember being a new nurse, feeling unprepared for all the communication and the interaction required to perform my job. I can remember the increased anxiety and being surrounded by so many strangers. And I had to engage with everyone from peers to physicians to patients and their family members. And sometimes it was a room full of family members, and I quickly had to learn to form strategies and communication skills to have a positive and productive 12-hour shift as an introvert in a busy, extroverted environment. So let's discuss five tips for the introverted nurse in the workplace. Tip number one, be confident in your qualities. Nurse.org staff wrote an article discussing six reasons introverts make great nurses. You will find that these nurses are better listeners and more observant. They keep cool in emergencies by remaining calm. And this also eases the patients, their family members, and the nurses' peers. Introverts are generally known to be good at focusing and working well independently. And you are okay with silence. And you make good team players once you know where you fit in within the team dynamics. And so these qualities allow you to understand the patient and their overall status better, especially when the patient is already facing an illness. Tip number two, develop your communication style. Now I'm going to unpack a lot here with strategies and stories. So let's dive right into it. A lot of my peers are like, Chanel, you an introvert? And I'm like, yes, I like a good book and complete silence by the end of the day, even though I'm very social at work. But you have to keep in mind that I've been working with the same organization for over 10 years now. And as a staff development specialist at this time, I also get to oversee all of the new hires. And so that helps me break the ice as well with having to socialize with others because I'm doing my job and teaching them new employees 
orientation. And so over the years, I've come to know quite a few of my peers from working on the units or in my current role now. And so either way, I have found three strategies that work extremely well for me in the workplace. I like to call them my superpowers and they help me to succeed when interacting with others. Now, when it comes to creating your own communication style, keep in mind that it must be effective. And effective communication must be clear, concise, correct, complete, compassionate, and understood by both the sender and the receiver. Like the old adage, practice makes perfect. The same is true for developing strategies to help you communicate effectively with your peers, the providers, and patients and their families when you tend to want to avoid this as an introvert. So my first superpower is the power of hello. As an introverted nurse, I quickly learned that speaking to others would help set the foundation for me and help counteract my anxiety. For instance, speaking to providers by name, even if they did not know me, allows me to do the following, memorize their name and make myself familiar to them. And so here are some examples of how you can greet providers. And let's just say the provider name is Dr. Smith, and I'm just going to use my name, Chanel. You could say, good morning, or I would say, good morning, Dr. Smith. My name is Chanel. Are you here to see Mrs. Jones today? Or, good morning, Dr. Smith. I'm Chanel, and I'm overseeing patients in rooms one through six today. Let me know if you need anything. And then you could also say, have a good day, Dr. Smith, as you observe the provider leaving the unit. That's something that I often did, even though I didn't have to interact with that physician when it came to taking care of my patients. Now, if you don't know someone's name or you forget it, you can simply say, hi, I'm Chanel. I know we've spoken before, but could you tell me your name again? Or how do you pronounce your name again? Now, when it comes to my peers and not the providers, I may say, hey, friend, and then carry on the conversation until I can see their name badge and then think, oh, that's their name. Now, it's important to remember that establishing a good working relationship with staff and providers, even if it's just on speaking terms, can go a long way. I recommend this strategy to nursing students, interns, and new nurses as they go through their clinicals and internships and orientation to the unit so that they don't just exist there, but they kind of get planted by getting to know their peers. Now, when it comes to patients, knocking and announcing your presence is a common courtesy when you enter someone's house. So do the same with patients in their rooms, even though they don't have a lock on their door. Make those first 30 seconds count by introducing yourself to help build trust and rapport with your patients and their families. And this can easily be done doing bedside handoff and report. Now, my second superpower is the power of conversation. Bear in mind that conversation involves more than just speaking and listening. While listening may come easily to introverts, it is the speaking part that can be challenging. And so we have to be mindful of how we said what we said. Therefore, consider the following strategies when conversing with others. Number one, be intentional about developing meaningful relationships with your peers. This can just be as simple as acknowledging someone by saying hello. Being intuitive already helps you to not take things personal, especially when you know your intentions are good and understanding that not everyone is as self-aware as you or understands boundaries, if this may be the case. Number two, don't be intimidated by providers They are just like us. They put their pants on one leg at a time too. Remember to maintain professionalism, ask questions, ask relevant questions, take notes, and follow up when necessary. A good example of this is when I worked in the cardiovascular intensive care unit, CVICU, and I worked under multiple cardiovascular surgeons. And even though they all performed the same surgeries they had, they may have had different preferences when it came to recovering their patients. So I made notes of what each CV surgeon liked. I asked questions and I followed up often. Being mindful that meaningful conversations are often more comfortable than small talk. Number three, when it comes to your patient, engage them in conversations beyond their diagnosis. Try to learn something about your patient that doesn't include their hospitalization. This approach can help establish a foundation of a trust and relationship because patients are more likely to trust and appreciate you when you demonstrate empathy and compassion. So just remember, patients don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. 
Now, we just reviewed some strategies for engaging in conversations with peers, providers, and patients, but let's discuss listening and, of course, those nonverbal strategies. So, introverted nurses, you already have good listening skills. So, I encourage the following strategies in the workplace. Number one, prioritize problem solving and active listening over creating issues and being reactive at work. Number two, body language is important. So in addition to smiling, it's important to make eye contact, stand tall, don't have your hands or arms folded across your chest. You want to appear welcoming. And just know that nonverbal communication should always be considered as it can convey negative attitudes such as eye rolling, regardless of how nicely the message is delivered. Eye rolling is eye rolling, right? Now, number three, conversations with healthcare providers are crucial for delivering safe patient care. So these conversations require active listening and speaking simultaneously. For example, when it receiving orders, you have to read those orders back. And then taking it a step further, I when I worked at the bedside, I would ask for options. For example, I had if I had a patient with a low blood pressure and the physician gave me an order for a 500 cc saline bolus, for example, I would ask, what would you like for me to do if the blood pressure does not respond to this bolus? Now, the physician may give me more options or he or she may say, just call me back. And when they said that, I felt a lot less anxious about doing so, especially if I had to make that call and especially at night shift if I had to make that call. Number four, when it comes to patients, I always listened for what the patient wasn't saying. In addition to having meaningful conversations with patients, I would soon discover sometimes that patients were actually depressed or dealing with stressors beyond their control or grief, which helped to clarify why a patient's health was actually declining in addition to their medical history. My third and last superpower is the power of thank you. Do you enjoy receiving appreciation and thanks for your help? Of course. Expressing gratitude and being thankful has been shown to release happy hormones, um, which benefit both the sender and receiver. And before I go on this long drawn out rant, let me go ahead and give credit to and encourage you to go back and listen to Nurse Carolyn's Nurse Converse podcast episode impact of gratitude for the busy nurse to learn more about the positive effects of gratitude. For me, treating my peers and healthcare providers with courtesy and respect have led to many opportunities. And just to give you some examples, when I worked on a step-down unit, I had an intensivist who recommended me to a CVICU manager before I even considered applying to CVICU. He even brought the manager up to my unit to meet me, even though I was off that day. And now Moving forward, I had I never had issues finding a preceptor while studying for my master's in education. And I had the privilege of following under some an awesome cardiologist at that time. And I'm just going to school to be an educator, not even a nurse practitioner. And so I was very thankful for that. And then even today, I have the opportunity to host this podcast episode because of my peers and my healthcare family, in which I am humbly grateful. Also, don't forget to thank your patients for entrusting you with their care. Patients are not just numbers, but the driving force behind our jobs. After all, it's the sick who need a doctor, not the healthy. And even when you are faced with situations that are beyond your control when it comes to the patients, you can still approach the patients with a positive attitude because you may be the only light they experience in their dark world. Now, a lot of socializing was just discussed in tip number two, creating your communication style. So hopefully I left you with some gems to take with you along the way as you follow through with tip number one, being confident in your qualities as an introvert. Now let's dive quickly into these last three tips that are geared at helping you recharge and provide some balance as an introverted nurse in the workplace. Tip number three, make socializing less draining by staying patient focused. As an introvert, working in a busy environment such as a hospital can be quite exhausting, especially when you have to work 12 hours straight, not to mention the possibility of working overtime or with short staffing or the other challenges that come with working in healthcare or in the hospital setting. However, reminding yourself of your purpose for choosing nursing and focusing on patients' needs can help you cope with the hustle and bustle of this busy setting. For me, I picture the hospital as an organized body that relies on different systems to 
provide safe patient care, keeping in mind that nurses are the heart of this body. So when faced with challenging situations, I found it helpful to concentrate on my responsibilities and just strive to do my best. Rather than getting frustrated or caught up in conflicts, I would ask questions to understand the situation better and how we could improve going forward. Ultimately, my priority was, and it still is, always ensuring that patients are safe and taken care of. Now, tip number four, take small breaks of seclusion to recharge. In my previous Nurse Converse episode, How to Heal from Burnout and Love Nursing Again, I went over my typical 12-hour shift at the bedside. Looking back now, I realized that taking small breaks for snacks and needing those five to 10 minutes of seclusion because of my personality trait was important. These moments of solitude were probably more important than the snacks themselves. And so taking those small breaks were necessary to recharge and push through the four-hour increments of my 12-hour shift. My last and final tip is tip number five, set boundaries to prevent feeling overstimulated and overwhelmed. As an introvert, setting boundaries is crucial. I believe as a human, setting boundaries is crucial. As you seek those quiet and intimate moments throughout the workday, remember that you don't have to work overtime every time. Don't feel obligated to do something that overwhelms you at the expense of everyone else. Remember that no is a complete sentence and there's no need to explain when asked to do something that puts unnecessary strain on you. Here are some examples of how you can say no. Number one, I would love to help, but I can't right now. Number two, Thank you for trusting me to help you with this, but unfortunately, I can't. Number three, I appreciate the offer, but I am committed to doing something else. Number four, I'm grateful you asked for my help, but I can't help you at this time. And number five, last but not least, no. Now, I'm not saying don't do your job, but what I am saying is don't overexert yourself so you can keep being the best version of you. So in conclusion, introverted nurses make great nurses too. You possess unique qualities that benefit the patient. And with effective communication strategies, you can communicate effectively with everyone at work. Stepping out of your comfort zone and initiating conversations can lead to more productive days and future opportunities. Hopefully, the five tips we just discussed will empower you at all stages of your nursing journey to communicate more effectively and confidently in the healthcare world, especially as introverts. If any part of this episode resonated with you, please rate the podcast and include my name for more opportunities to hear from me, Nurse Chanel. You can also connect with me on All One Nurse through Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for joining Nurse Converse, brought to you by Nurse.org. Help us grow by leaving a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Nurse.org supports nurses with career and education tips, life advice, and breaking news. Thank you for all you do and for being you.